Today's chapter, we discuss alkyne and uh, the reactions of alkyne. Uh, this chapter, we first go through some naming. Uh, it's much easier than the, al uh, the alkene. And, uh, and then we discuss the, how we make the alkyne. The alkyne is a linear with a triple bond molecule. Uh, since the triple bond, it is mainly goes through some elimination. Uh, so start from the all saturated or some uh, halogenated alkene to go through elimination to make alkyne. And the alkyne has its own unique reactions. Uh, in many ways, very similar to alkene, except uh, because it's a linear molecule, the reaction is uh, in terms of stereochemistry and uh, regio selectivity, what location to react, it's much easier than the alkene. And um, the alkyne has uh, one very interesting part. It is can, uh, the terminal alkyne is acidic, has a hydrogen that is more acidic. So we can turn that into a uh, nucleophile by forming the salt of that, such a acidic hydrogen, acidic uh, uh, alkyne. Uh, forming the salt, which is the conjugate base of the alkyne. And this conjugate base can be also act like a nucleophile. So we can use this to, um, to attack another carbon centered with a leaving group and to make even longer carbon. So in the synthesis, uh, it becomes useful. Okay, next semester, you will see more of a, such a, uh, scenarios use some chemical reaction to increase the number of carbons in the uh, in the organic molecule. And the last part we discuss the halogenation ozone um, ozonolysis. Those reactions are very similar to the alkene, and uh, so we'll just get into that. Uh, the alkynes apparently is uh, in nature, but it's, uh, relatively not as, abund not as abundant as the S alkene. And so those are <clears throat> some molecules we have. Uh, so those are the uh, organic molecules, either in nature or man made medicine, that has alkene functional group, alkyne functional group. The alkyne has a carbon carbon triple bond. Uh, so it has a two double pi bond and one single bond. Cannot rotate because to rotate, you will need to break the two pi bond. And that's very difficult. And also because the um, carbon has two electron groups, both carbon have two electron groups. So that's a linear. When we draw the line structures, this part needs to maintain a straight, straight line. Uh, the alkynes can be a uh, nucleof the uh, uh, can be nucleophile because alkyne it has uh, four pi electrons, and as we learned before, the pi electrons are relatively high energy, and they are more uh, available for react forming bond with the other atoms, so the uh, they act like a nucleophile. Okay, so. <clears throat> The alkyne naming is much easier than the alkene. Uh, the naming guideline, similar to the alkene, when choosing the longest chain, uh, the longest chain must have the triple bond as a key functional group. Keep the triple bond as low number as possible. And the, all the others are centered around the uh, triple bond. So name is very easy to, to go through. So this is kind of a, uh, the parent naming, it is simply replaced the alkane, A-N-E by Y-N-E, by Y-N-E. And again, the naming we pick the triple bond has high priority. The triple bond must have a, just like in the alkene naming, we keep the double bond as the parent chain, as a, uh, the last part name. So for example, this is a compound. Okay, this is a compound. Even though the longest carbon chain, it is from left to right, which is eight carbons. Um, 
But since the parent chain must have the uh, triple bond, instead, this it will be the parent chain, even though it's not the longest. And uh, without being parent, we keep the triple bond as a low, low count, as low number as possible. So this is number one carbon, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven carbons and it's alkyne. alkyne. And so all the rest of the naming is uh, fairly straightforward. There's not so much really common on. And again, the location of the triple bond, um, it is similar to the alkene. It can be either put the location in the middle of the name or right in front, right in front. So this is the, uh, from left to right, give the longest chain with alkyne, the triple bond, the lowest number. And then the, um, since this triple bond is between the carbon two and three, uh, triple bond start from carbon number two. So therefore the naming it is the um, two heptine or hept uh, two i. Uh, so anyway, for pronunciation for um, just for saying for speech, it seems like a two heptine just not easier. <clears throat> so that's about naming. Uh, there's some non IUPAC, the non standard naming, and that's chemistry such as make it easier to, to say. The um, carbon, carbon, triple bond, when you have a, the smallest molecule, the smallest molecule with a triple bond, that's with two carbons. And this compound, we either name that as the E sign, which is actually fairly rare in the, um, in the chemical, um, among the chemists. The most common name is acetylene. It's acetylene. So this name, it sounds like have a alkene, uh, the, the double bond. This is actually more preferred, more popular name more popular, even though it's not the uh, E-sign is the uh, IUPAC name, less, less used. So based on the triple bond, uh, we name some compound, if it's related to the uh, triple bond, we name accordingly. We name, for example, the uh, this is the E-sign, two carbons. If one of the carbon linked with the methyl group, we just call it methyl acetylene, methyl acetylene. This proper name, it should be uh, propyne. This is IUPAC name, propyne. And uh, so you can see this compound also, we named uh, based on the acetylene. And that would be uh, both ends are the isopropyl. So this is diisopropyl. Both ends have isopropyl. So diisopropyl acetylene. Uh, the IUPAC name will be one, two, three, four, five, six. So the last part of the name should be hexine. Hexine. And the uh, triple bond is on the carbon between the carbon three and four. So three hexine. And then we label those groups. It'll be two, five dimethyl. Two five dimethyl three hexine. So you can see there's a, we have we have some alternatives on the naming compound. And the last compound, last compound. This is the you have a this is a benzene ring, so it's a phenyl group. And the other is a propyl group. And just name named based on the acetylene. Uh, the alkyne. In the synthesis, in the chemical reactions, uh, there are two kinds of uh, alkyne. One is terminal. Terminal has, this carbon have a hydrogen. Okay, keep in mind, this hydrogen is very, fairly acidic, much more acidic than the alkene or alkane, much more acidic. So oftentimes we use terminal alkyne, uh, going through the, uh, some more reactions to use for synthesis to add more carbons in the long chain. 
and there's an internal trivial bound. This is less useful in synthesis. We can still do some addition reactions, adding bromine, adding hydrogen, and so forth. Uh, but in terms of adding more carbons, this cannot be done by adding more carbons. Not like the same way as the terminal. In the alkene, uh, in the alkene chapters, we did not discuss uh, what the differences make between the terminal alkene or in internal alkene. But for alkyne, uh, this becomes a more important difference because they go through different chemical reactions, quite different chemical reactions. Uh, so this is about naming compound. Okay, naming this compound. Oh my boy, this is. Uh, actually, we don't see this kind of compound in the actual, in the actual um, Zeppelin naming. Uh, so this compound, if we are to name, we can either pick the longest chain and then name it. But this has a problem because uh, this is cyclohexyl. Cyclohexyl group, and uh, this part is a very big, uh, non-extended. So uh, the easier way I can think of naming it is named based on acetylene. It treats as a center. And then this part is cyclohexyl, start with C. And this part, this part is a big group, okay, big, big group. This part is the, um, okay, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So the longest star from here, one. That will give you all the others have a certain, certain uh, numbers on the group, two, three, four, five. So on the two and three have two methyl group and is a pentyl. And the pentyl is carbon threes, the link with the acetylene. So this whole chunk as a group, that would be um, three. It is pentyl, but on the pentyl, there's uh, more groups. Position two has a methyl group. Position three have uh, another methyl, so two, three dimethyl. Two, three dimethyl, and this is the uh, together is a pen, pentane, so pentyl. Uh, so that's the naming for this chunk, and this is the um, cyclohexyl. Cyclo, cyclohexyl. And then the three, two, three, that is a big group. We probably don't see that in our Zappel homework. Uh, this, is some, this is some naming practice with left over from the earlier lectures. Yeah, we have some, uh, oh, they have some different naming system. Let's see. Cytohexyl, three acyl, pen time. So this naming, it seems like, oh, I see. It treats this as, as a parent. And the number one has cyclohexyl. Uh, so this is the much easier name. You basically, um, cyclohexane, not a part of parent. The parent start from here because it gives the bond as the lowest. Yeah, this is a completely different naming system. It actually, it actually makes the uh, um, it makes more sense. But you have the other way to name is use the uh, acetylene as a parent. Then you have a lot to struggle with. You'd be just like this, cyclohexyl, and then and so forth. Anyway, the naming for the alkyne is not at the focus. We'll give some reactions. Uh, in the future, the naming will be depends on what type of compounds, and it will not be the main topic of each chapter. Uh, the alkane, we spend most time practicing naming. Alkene, there's the E and D configurations, but not, not so much in the future. So now we talk about the alkyne, this kind of compound. The alkyne, because the, uh, if it's a terminal alkyne, 
term it on kind because uh, SP hybridization, the carbonyl, after losing the proton, the carbonyl is much more stabilized. This is very stabilized carb carb uh, carbonyl. Uh, so it become more reactive because it's more acidic. And you can see the uh, alkane or saturated carbon hydrogen bond, PK is a 50, is, a, is the weakest acid. Uh, with the al alkene, the acid, the acidity becomes a little stronger, but the uh, terminal alkynes, the acidity is many, 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 many times stronger than the others. And uh, PK25, that put it uh, among the organic compound, it's one of the medium, medium acidity among the organic compound. And so after losing the proton, when treated with strong base, very, very strong base, such as uh, sodium amide, which is uh, the ammonia, the conjugate base of ammonia, form compound with sodium, the sodium amide, or treated even stronger uh, base, the uh, butane, conjugate base of butane, which is a butyl anion. Anion, butyl anion. This is also a very strong base. So when treated with even stronger base, uh, the terminal alkyne can become depronated and become the uh, acety, acetylide ion. This is still a very strong base, but in organic chemistry, oftentimes we use it as a nucleophile. And that would be similar to the um, alcohol. Alcohol becomes a alkoxide anion. So it's very similar to that. Uh, so how to make alkynes? Synthesis of alkyne are basically use the um, elimination reaction. It's just similar to the alkene. To form double bond, use elimination. And so the uh, elimination we do, the, uh, this is what we did with alkene. Single halogenated and with beta hydrogen present, elimination will give us a double bond. So treated with a strong base, uh, and add some heat, so this always helps. Uh, to form the triple bond, then we need uh, another halide. So the um, the two halogens on the same carbon, and there are two beta, there must be two beta hydrogens available. Two leaving group and two beta hydrogen available. Then that will go through the elimination, give you the triple bond. Use a very strong base. And so the, the reaction is very similar to the, we discussed in the E2 with a strong base. It is goes through the anti-coplanar or anti-peripheral uh, alignment to lose the proton. And so the, uh, in the first step, it becomes a, uh, a vinyl, first product is a vinyl, halide. Halogen connected directly with a double bond. Okay, the vinyl, vinyl halide. And the vinyl halide, because there's still one more beta hydrogen available, it reacts with uh, another strong, another molar base. So we need a more base in this reaction. Another molar base take away the, the second, the last uh, proton, at the same time remove the uh, leaving group, the halides, give us the alkyne. So that's the, uh, when the two bromine on the same carbon, we call it geminal. Uh, it's related to the, um, there's a zodiac, is a Gemini. So it's the same on the, it's like a twin. Two halogen on the same carbon. So these two are like uh, twin children on the same parent, same from the same parent. Uh, so that's a geminal, the same same halogen on the same carbon. Uh, halogen, two halogen atoms on the same carbon, geminal. It can be the uh, two halogen on separate but nearby, next to each other. They 
vicinity, vicinity, close, close by. And the reaction is very similar. You first lose these two. And then next step, you go through another elimination, take away the second. Uh, so either way, give you the alkyne final product. And there's no good thing is uh, no stereochemistry, no E and Z preference. So now we talk about the reactions. What about those alkyne reactions? Uh, the alkyne reactions, first of all, the terminal alkyne. Uh, wait a minute. This is the, okay. During the reactions, during the reaction, when we make the alkyne, this is the reaction first we, we produce alkyne. If there are more base in the system, in the elimination reaction, then the excess base, the excess base, it can uh, remove the proton because this proton is more acidic. Give the alkenide ion, the alkenide or alkynide ion. So that is uh, more stabilized because more acidic on the alkyne. Uh, so after this reaction, okay, the during the elimination reaction, in case the uh, excess base available, which is often the case, oftentimes it is case, during elimination reaction, we oftentimes put more reagents, more base than needed. It just to speed up the reaction uh, due to the higher concentration of the base. And uh, so in the reaction, this kind of shows you in the middle, uh, we may not just get the alkyne as a final product because the excess uh, base present in the reaction system, we actually have the, uh, we form the alkynide ion first, the salt first. And then to finally recover the alkyne, we need to add a water because water is, a, is one of the cheapest uh, weak acid. And this acid still is stronger than the alkyne. So we use the water to give the proton to the uh, to the alkynide and finally give us the product. So sometimes the reaction condition, if you see the uh, first step, we add a strong base. Second step, add water. Why we add water to the reaction system? It is uh, the reaction did not give us the alkyne as we think because the uh, excess base will turn the alkyne product to the uh, to the anion. To really finally recover recover the alkyne, we need to add water to the reaction mixture so that we uh, get the alkyne instead of a alkynide ionic compound. So that's basically the how the alkyne is being made. Uh, so there's some uh, simple reactions. See, now we, since we have been learning more reactions, we're kind of getting more practice on the uh, uh, user reaction to design the, find out what reactant to give you that. This is a little practice on this. Uh, first step we have, you can see this is typical elimination condition and to give you the terminal alkyne. First step, excess, excess sodium amide. React with the um, dihydrogen, a dibromo alkane. And these dibromo we call the geminol, uh, geminol because they're the same, same carbon. And the second step is adding water to eliminate the um, alkenide ion. Turn the alkenide ion to alkyne. Uh, so the reaction is fairly straight, straightforward because the bromide is on the terminal carbon, which means uh, there's no other possibilities, no other possibility, no other alkyne product. If the bromine is here, two bromines are here, we might have two different products. That are complicated things. Uh, so use the uh, two bromide on the terminal carbon, you get only one product. So the product should be the uh, we lose two bromines and this single bond becomes a triple bond. It, since it is triple bond and the carbon should be linear, we just need to pay attention to the uh, 
the shape of the molecule. So there's a one, two, three, four, five. There should be five common. And this bond, once formed, it should be the triple bond. It should be staying maintained linear. And therefore, the uh, one, two, three. So these are the first three. And start from here, next with it would be the triple bond. But because the triple bond is uh, linear, I should, let me see, one, two, three, four. Start from number four, number four carbon, number four carbon. Start from number four carbon, uh, it has a triple bond with uh, number five carbon. So you draw the final structure like this. The, uh, if you show the hydrogen, uh, nothing wrong with that, it's uh, acceptable. Because this hydrogen is a little different from the other alkane hydrogens. Showed or not, it's the, uh, the last hydrogen. You don't have to, but oftentimes both are accepted. So either this or that without showing the hydrogen. Okay, second. Uh, this second is about a question. Look for a reactant that goes through the uh, strong base, ammonia as a solvent. So this is elimination condition. And finally, okay, sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry to interrupt. So are they all going to be elimination conditions then? Yeah, these are, yes, we have a strong base. It is a elimination condition. Okay, is there ever going to be a point where it's like an SN1 or SN2 when it comes to like the alkynes? Uh, in the later of this chapter, later part of this chapter, we discuss, we use those reactions. Okay, thank you. We use SN2, yeah. There's no SN1 uh, because the, this is such a strong base. Strong base goes through SN2. That's right, thank you. Yes. Or mm -hmm. the E2 or E2, both. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, okay, so we have uh, this. This we got a problem. The uh, we just learned two kind of bromide. We use the geminal geminal dibromide or the vicinal, the uh, two bromine on the two separate carbons, nearby carbons, and eliminate. If we decide, let's say there's a one, two, three, four, five. Five carbon with one methyl group. Um, so I'm gonna show the, show the part that did not react. This part did not really change, copy that. And uh, so this carbon has triple bond. It should start from a, um, a halide like this. And, okay, let's say my uh, halogens here. This question is a little harder because we have to think about all different possibilities. Okay, we can start from here. Uh, but with this reactant goes through the elimination, problem is there are two beta hydrogens. And so if you eliminate, use a strong base, these two both will react. And uh, this elimination, by the way, eliminates this hydrogen is actually easier because this is the uh, um, Zycev elimination. Zycev elimination should be the most popular, most likely. Zycev. Lose hydrogen from the carbon with more uh, substituent. Your first step will give you this double bond. And then you still have one more halogen, you're gonna lose the other, the other hydrogen. This could be a mess. This is not good. It's because the reaction can go both directions, either this way or that way. So uh, as you can see, the uh, coming up the reactant to get your product, this is kind of getting into the territory of a synthesis. It's getting harder. We have to think more. Okay, so the first one is ruled out. Let's try different other possibilities. Same backbone. And let's say we have a two bromine here. Would that be good? How many different possibilities can eliminate? 
So if you think about how many beta hydrogen do we have? So this is one beta hydrogen. There is a three beta hydrogen here, three beta hydrogen here on this uh, current. So again, we're getting to a situation, the elimination can go both ways. This is not good. It will give us two, give us two product. Okay, so that means we ran out of options for the germinal bromide. Uh, what's the other way? Are there any other bromide can give us uh, through the elimination give us alkyne? So let's take a look. What about a vicinal di dihalides? By the way, this dihalides, uh, as we learned, the alkene addition reactions is fairly easy to make. It is simply a bromination, the halogenation of uh, alkene give us dibromide. So the other option, oh, the other option. The other option is, before showing that, that could be wrong, by the way, before show that. Still the backbone, oh no. Um, what is this? Bromine here and bromine here. If we have dihalide like this, if we have dihalide like this, this, as we learn from the reaction, will give me the alkyne as only product. So this is the way to go. Because the vicinal dihalides elimination, it limits. It is set the uh, limited possibility where the elimination can take place. And so basically, vicinal uh, dibromide, for the most part, is much more useful. And also, in synthesis, it's just more likely to happen. Uh, so. But my PowerPoint shows something else. Let's erase everything down here. Let's see what's the PowerPoint. All right, so these are possibilities. Uh, and, oh, okay. Since the PowerPoint is showing this as the uh, answer, uh, but as I go over the, uh, I, uh, now I have a better idea, it's actually uh, vicinal dibromide is better. Yeah, because isn't that one the geminal or something, that one? It's still Gemino, yes. And then you go, elimination go, go this way or that way. So that's why this is not a good choice for elimination. Yeah. Um, alkyne in general, not very uh, often used in organic uh, um, synthesis. So, okay, what about the now we get the alkyne. Now we talk about the reactions. Uh, in the future chapters, in the future chapter, we'll go through each functional group uh, as one chapter. And uh, each chapter, the functional group, is always started with uh, general physical chemical properties, what kind of reactions they have. The second topic, which is uh, the important part of the chapter, we'll discuss how those compounds, those functional groups have been prepared to be made, being synthesized through the organic chemical reactions. And those reactions oftentimes is the one we learned before. And after synthesis uh, for that functional group, the next topic will be uh, what kind of reactions those functional group will be getting involved into. And so that's the general layout. In this chapter, the same, same thing layout. It goes from naming and uh, and then the reactions and now and then the synthesis. Now we're getting to the reactions. What do those uh, uh, kind of compound will do? Uh, how they will react? The first first uh, reaction alkyne will do because alkyne is a highly unsaturated with two um, with a triple bond, which basically have two pi bond. Uh, it can easily, fairly easily go through the hydrogenation uh, using catalyst. And the hydrogenation reaction, 
uh, you use a hydrogen gas and platinum as a catalyst. You give us uh, all the way becomes uh, alkane. And uh, so this reaction, the uh, if you remember in the alkene chapter, hydrogenation of the alkene is catalyzed by the by the metal catalyst, and the stereochemistry, the syn addition is two hydrogen atoms on the same side of the double bond, give a sin. And especially when you work with a, a ring, a molecule that has a ring, you can see much better how the hydrogen being added. But anyway, the uh, with alkyne, it's very similar. Uh, the first step gives us the syn addition. Okay, both hydrogen add on the same side of the triple bond. So since it adds to the same side, it will give us a cis as an intermediate. But under this condition, hydrogen platinum, this is a condition we learned in the last chapter, uh, alk alkene also react with the hydrogen catalyst. So uh, the, for the alkyne, we're supposed to get this uh, alkene as the product. But again, under same condition, hydrogen, hydrogen gas and catalyst, the alkene will further react. So eventually it becomes this is fully saturated uh, adding four hydrogen atoms becomes the alkane as a final product. The alkene hydrogenation is not very useful because um, you cannot stop and become alkane. And alkane in organic chemistry is what we consider as dead end. The alkane is basically the least useful chemicals among all the organic chemicals uh, we study. And as you can see from the industry, alkanes are basically used for fuel. For fuel. Methane gas, ethane gas are both part of the natural gas. And the propane, butane for barbecue, for uh, for cigarette lighters, those kind of things. And the more advanced, more uh, advanced alkane becomes a solvent. So uh, this is a reaction not useful. Well, what makes make them useful? We basically use a catalyst that is uh, um, been partially deactivated we limited the reactivity. Points in, in industry, in chemical engineering, chemical industry, it means um, being compromised in the uh, reactivity. It's poisoned. And so this catalyst uh, will react, will add the, help add the hydrogen to the, al the alkyne. Uh, but the react reactivity is not strong enough to keep um, adding more hydrogen. So hydrogen with the um, partial deactivated catalyst, it gives us uh, only the cis alkene, no further reaction. So that becomes synthesis in, in synthesis uh, very useful because alkene oftentimes is a starting material for many, many different compounds in uh, nature or in our industry or our civilization. And so this is a reaction we selectively get only the cis alkene. Z alkene or cis alkene, actually the more properly called a cis because now we have uh, two hydrogens on the same side, cis. So what about those uh, Poisoned or partially deactivated catalyst, we call the Lindelar's catalyst. This is a general name. It's basically have a, um, a quin uh, the uh, quinoline and the platinum transition metal, uh, barium. These are the is one of support we use. Barium sulfate is not reactive; it is insoluble, so use that as support. And we use the alcohol. So that's the uh, poison. In chemical reactions, we simply just call Lindelar's catalyst. We don't need to memorize exactly in the catalyst, the component of the catalyst. And so the that's the uh, reaction. This is reaction give us only the cis product. So that we need to remember, we need to remember the, the stereochemistry for this reaction. Lindelar's catalyst give us the cis alkene. Uh, there's another kind of a reduction. This re reduction for alkyne can give us a trans alkene. 
but the reagent is very different, kind of unique. It is basically we um, we add the very strong reducing agent, sodium metal, dissolved in a non-aqueous conditions. The sodium metal uh, it reacts with ammonia a little bit, but mainly sodium metal can dissolve in uh, ammonia liquid, liquid ammonia at a low temperature. And the di sodium dissolving the ammonia gives a very unique blue color solution. It is a metal dissolved in ammonia form a solution. This solution have a blue color. Uh, the sodium metal in ammonia it also add hydrogen because uh, uh, the sodium reactive with ammonia give it hydrogen. But this hydrogen is actually used for reactions, not to become gas. Anyway, those um, the additions give us trans alkene hydrogen on the opposite side of the double bond. So uh, Lindner's give us cis alkene. Sodium in ammonia give us trans alkene. And so that's basically put together. We have um, two different reactants give us different product. So keep in mind that we learn about those reactions. Uh, it is later enable us to have those reactions as tool to make the molecules that we want. Yeah, so that's, uh, once we know that, just a little simple, simple practice becomes easy. Uh, the first one is uh, metal with uh, ammonia. This should give us trans. Trans happens on the triple bond. And so I would just draw the triple bond as like zigzag. This is the triple bond. Become double. Become double and the carbon is uh, in the trans position. So we have one, two, three. Between three and four, there's a, um, there was that triple bond. Now that between three and four, there's double bond. Becomes that. And since the trans, the sodium and ammonia give us trans. We get this as product. A trans um, three hexene. And with a hydrogen with a Lindler's catalyst, Lindler's, and that's give us cis. Cis, I draw the double one first. And the, the alkyl group, alkyl group uh, on the same side of double bond. So this is cis three hexene as a product. Oh, there's more uh, reactions, more reactions. Um, the next step of reactions, this is what we learned in the trans. Uh, this, so, so far in this chapter, we're reviewing, at this point, we're reviewing the alkene adding the hydrogen's reaction. The uh, uh, bromine in the non-polar solvent, this is just simply have the halogenation or bromination. We add bromine on the carbon carbon double bond. Uh, when we add the bromine to the double bond, what is the stereochemistry on the double bond? Does two bromine add on the same side of the double bond? or on the opposite side of double bond? Would it be the opposite? Because opposite, the yes. Yeah. So the reaction, uh, this, uh, we have to really think because, uh, uh, so to add that, the uh, we add one bromine from our side, the other on the other side, it's kind of hard to see. So the, based on the last time we discussed, Was a better draw like this, which turned the uh, planar into wedge and dash.
Where is that? This is the hydrogen. Um, I'm gonna say it is dash. Um, uh, hmm? or is it so both? Is Beth? Is both right? Because it's trans, or does? How does that trans. I basically I just rotate a molecule. I have not added bromine yet. Okay, but oh, okay. add bromine here with this bromine add here. This add bromine add here. So you get a this is the product. Uh, so this molecule will rotate. Rotate the bottom, rotate it, become close to me. And the top, whatever on top, away from me, becomes that first. And then I add a bromine. And this molecule have two chiral center. Uh, so this is one way to add. The other way to add, the other way to add, I just copy this structure. Remember how I rotate it? Take some practice. Yeah, this hydrogen was not shown before. Let's show that and make it easier to see. All right, so have double bond. This is double bond, but will turn into a single bond. All right, so this is before we add bromine. The other way to add bromine is this one. This one add bromine from top. This one add bromine from the bottom. So this is how we get a two product from the addition of bromine. Uh, okay, what about this one? This is different. This adding bromines, the, uh, I rotate so that the acyl group close to me, both become wedge. Mm -hmm. And the hydrogen become dash. And then the bromine one on top, the other gap from the bottom. And there's another product. The other product is basically the same wedge. Wedge again, acid group, dash, hydrogen. Oh, I need to show the hydrogen. Don't forget that hydrogen. Dash, but hydrogen. Why is it for this reaction the Bromides are um, also opposite each other. Uh, this is the last chapter. Al when the alkene add bromine and the add the uh, um, uh, halogen, we go through the bromonium intermediate. Remember that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's it's, what it's the. Uh, so were you? Okay. Gotcha. Once they form the ring, the the other bromide can only attack from the other side. That's basically the. Uh, Yeah, the key is uh, the last step bromination reaction. It gives us the um, uh, bromonium, a bromine triangle shaped cation. And that's the intermediate. And that's the reason why we have anti addition. The bromine add on the anti addition. So, what we're drawing here, this is kind of a review on the alkene addition, which is. Uh, just last chapter, last quiz. And these two, if we name it, we can see the compound, they got a very different different compound. We got a different compound. Uh, there are four stereoisomers because after adding the bromine, uh, so the reaction become like this. If you don't show the stereochemistry, that becomes like this. There are two chiral centers. So that means there are uh, two pairs of enantiomers. Because uh, each car the uh, each star carbon uh, have RS and the other have also have RS. Uh, there should be four combinations. It should be RR, RS, and, and uh, um, SR, SS, four possibilities. And this is how we're getting the, all these uh, four. But the, these two are very different. And uh, in this molecule, because it's symmetrical, the uh, R, 
S R and R S R and uh, uh, R S are the same compound. Because of symmetry in the uh, in the reactant, so we actually get only three compounds. Because SR and RN is the same compound. So how would you know? Uh, you basically each uh, carbon center we decide RS, and then we will know which is which. This part is uh, we discussed in the last chapter. Uh, the, the RS designation for each product. So anyway, this is the alkyne chapter. I will just uh, be light on this. We'll kind of move on to the next topic. Uh, next one, hydration with mercury catalyst. This reminds us of the mercuration and uh, demercuration reaction in the alkene. In that alkene reaction, it gives us alcohol. In the alkyne, uh, the reaction first step still gives us the alcohol, but the intermediate will rearrange. It will become ketone. So this is the uh, reaction that happens. This reaction also is following Markovnikov, which means OH add on the carbon that has more carbon. Okay. Uh, the reaction takes place is the actual mechanism we're not interested. Okay, you can you can take a look at the inter intermediate and so forth, but we'll be, we'll not be really uh, focused on that. Just focus on what the what do you get in the reaction. This reaction we use the acid and the mercury as a catalyst, and you can see the Markovnikov between these two carbons, a weight group add on the carbon that has more carbons add on this, because this carbon have only linked with only one carbon, so the OH should get on here. Add OH and hydrogen also, we got an enol. It is basically an alcohol, so the end with the OL, but it also have a double bond, so we call it enol. En, which means the alkene, is a combination, is a hybrid between the alkene and the alcohol. Okay, this compound is very unstable. It quickly rearranged by shifting the protons eventually give us ketone. Ketone, which is very, very stable. So, um, alkyne, when we add uh, water, we call it hydration, with mercury and acid catalyst, give us a ketone. So, this reaction becomes interesting because ketone is a functional group in organic chemistry we can uh, make it more, build more structures. And so this reaction we just need to know, and know the Markovnikov addition, give us a ketone. Uh, the reaction first takes place as adding the, uh, adding the OH, but immediately follow the rearrangement, give us the ketone as a final real product. And so that's the uh, reaction mechanism. And um, so we get the, uh, uh, this is reaction intermediate, carbon cation here, which is here. And the next step, it is the, um, between these two, for this carbon cation, because the lone pair on the oxygen and next to a carbon cation, the lone pair can form bond, become double bond and the oxygen gain positive charge become protonated ketone. And the finally lose the, lose the proton by the base, uh, which is water in the reaction condition, give us the ketone as the final product. Uh, tautomers are, uh, tautomers is basically the uh, constitutional isomer, which means the bonding is different. But even though these two compound bonding is different, uh, because uh, for whatever reason, it can easily chain them back and forth into the other structure, into the counterpart. We call them tautomers. 
Constitution isomer, as we learned before, oftentimes are distinctly different compounds because the bonding is completely different. But here, the tautomers are very special constitution isomers for many reasons, such as the acidic proton, I make it easy to transform back and forth. Uh, but this reaction, by the way, is not selective. The mercury is not selective, it's more complicated. Okay, this one's uh, the, in the alkene chapter, we learn about the anti Markovnikov, which is a hydroboration and oxidation reactions. That's in the alkene. In the alkyne, very similar reaction can take place. And the reaction conditions are very similar. We use the uh, borane, the borane dissolved in THF, powder, and aprotic solvent. The reaction will add the, um, after this, binding with boron and then uh, oxidate, oxidation with a peroxide. Uh, the OH add on the carbon that was less substituent, OH add to here. Okay, OH add to here, this also gives us a, another E now. But this E now is interesting. The uh, tautomerization, the uh, transformation between the tautomers, it gives aldehyde. So this reaction, hydroboration oxidation reactions, uh, in chemistry almost exclusively for making aldehyde. And this will not give you um, ketone, especially when the reaction on the terminal alkynes. And so the enol, as again, uh, tautomerized becomes uh, this oxygen, uh, basically, this oxygen lose H. The H goes to goes to this carbon, and uh, this becomes double bond. So it kind of looks like a resonance, but it's not a resonance. So the alkane reaction, uh, we have the Markovnikov, which is mercury catalyst, and now we have the the hydroboration, borane based reaction, gives the aldehyde. And so that's the, yeah, the anti-Markov hydroboration on the terminal alkynes gives an aldehyde. In the next semester, organic chemical reaction that is involving the uh, keno aldehyde, this is actually the first step. We start from a alkane. Start from alkane, go through different reactions, will give us either the aldehyde or ketone. And so the, uh, this is the practice to synthesize. My mouse will key for that. Oh, okay. Draw the alkyne reactant and uh, reagent. Reactant, so the organic part. Reagents are mercury acid or hydroboration peroxide. I'm sorry, that's the reagents. And So if you look at this, uh, suppose we are to synthesize, which is uh, a ketone. The ketone reaction, by the way, the ketone can be made either through the mercury hydration or the hydroboration oxidation, both will give. But if you want to make the ketone as the only product, as the only product, uh, We'll need to start from the uh, pick a reactant, only give you give this one as only product. And uh, so this reaction, if you give the alkene, if the alkene was here, term. By the way, the alkene, uh, the alkyne, sorry, alkynes, true bond cannot be here. This cannot be true bond. It has to be this as true bond, and it goes through hydration. Will give you ketones this product. So basically, we will start with the uh, alkyne. Start from alkyne. And start from this. 
So this is terminal alkyne. We can use both the mercury acid as catalyst for hydroboration reaction, give the, uh, give the uh, double bond carbonyl product. Uh, for this reaction, if you use a mercury, if you use mercury and the acid, it would give us uh, this as an intermediate and finally give the alkyde, give us, I'm sorry, the ketone, ketone's product. Uh, this is actually the double, it should be the sugar bomb. This is joint errors, it should be sugar bomb. And so this reaction use the um, acid and mercury will give us the ketone as only product. Um, we can also use the um, anti-Markovic cup. Start from this reagent, if you use anti-Markovic cup, will give us the aldehyde as product. So, and also the, uh, remember, this cannot be the true bond. So therefore there's no possible, there's no other alternative. For making this compound, this is the only option, and use the um, use it Markovnikov. Use the mercury and acid <clears throat> in the reaction. Give us ketone as a full product, and um, start from this reactant. Keep in mind, if you use a hydroboration oxidation, that'll give us aldehyde, which is not what you want. So this chapter will, after midterm exam, we'll have more discussions about what to do, synthesis and so forth. And alkyl has more reactions, more reactions, hydrohalogenation, which is adding the HX. This is a reaction um, similar to the alkenes, will give us, uh, will give us uh, the reactions is the uh, Markovnikov. Halogens add on the carbon that with more carbon. This is the main product. But this is a product, uh, you can see there's still a alkene, a double bond. So we can add in more. Add in more halogens. In the end, follow the same rule as a Markovnikov. More halogens attached on the same carbon. Give us a Gemini dihalogenated product. This is the final product. By the way, once you get this product, you can go through elimination, give you terminal uh, alkyne. Give you terminal alkyne. Or the more way, the secondary alkyne. The, the uh, secondary carbon give you alkyne. The alkane. Alkene. That's good. Alkene. So the hydrohalogenation give you gemin, gemini. Twin halogen on the same carbon product. The reaction mechanism is very similar to the uh, alkene addition. You form the carbon cations, and the carbon cation keep adding more, adding the halides, give us the halide ion, finally give us the halide as a product. And this, uh, just like in alkene, we have the anti Markovnikov with peroxide. With alkynes, very similar. This is the uh, in the alkene chapter. Give us anti Markovnikov. The same thing happens with the alkyne. The addition uh, bromide add on the terminal, the one the carbon with the less substituent. And so give you this. And <clears throat> And because the peroxide also goes through a free radical reaction. The free radical reaction is the next chapter, a couple chapters down the road. anti Markovnikov, it's just like the uh, alkene reactions. And uh, alkyne halogenation adding uh, a large excess of the uh, halogens give you tetrahalogenated uh, product. This in sense is not very useful because once getting to a heavily halogenated, you cannot be doing much. Maybe in the fire retardant, because the fire retardant are the organic alkanes that are heavily substituted by the halogens, such as uh, bromine. 
is a fire retardant. It's basically slow down, slow down the burning of the wood. Because that's how you get that. Anyway, the photosynthesis uh, in the lab, not particularly interesting. Uh, ozone losses, this is a reaction similar to the alkene, but it's the same reaction as we can see the alkene. The difference is with the alkyne, uh, ozone losses will give us the carboxylic acid, can give a carboxylic acid. And this reaction is mainly used for analysis, is when you have a uh, unsaturated organic compound and we want to find out uh, where is this double bond or where is the triple bond? Let's break it apart by ozone and see what the product. Those fragments, by the, these fragments, you put them together and basically we're going to reconstruct the origin, original structure. So uh, ozone analysis is a reaction more used for synthesis for the uh, sorry, the analysis to find out what is the, where is the double bond in the older days. Modern days, because we have the NMR, we have IR, especially NMR, we can easily identify, locate where is the double bond, triple bond using NMR. Uh, this technology is more for the ancient 100 years ago technology for identifying the organic molecules. Uh, this compound, if you follow the same scheme, the uh, Forming, it should give us uh, hydrogen, carbon. It should give in this product when you react with ozone. But this compound with ozone being the very strong oxidizing agent, this become not stable. So it eventually become carbon dioxide. And so the ozonolysis, ozonolysis is more for break apart the unsaturated compound and located where the double bond is. And not particularly interesting for synthesis. That's pretty much to the end of the, oh, we have one more topic. It's about the uh, terminal alkynes used for synthesis. As we mentioned, terminal alkynes are having a very acidic hydrogen. So we can turn this um, alkyne into a nucle nucleophile by deprotonation with a strong base. And since this since a nucleophile, it can attack uh, form bond with more carbon. And so that's the, uh, it is very strong nucleophile, even those base. And if we use that to attack, increase getting more carbon in the structure. So this is an example. The, uh, the reaction is, once they form the uh, conjugate base of the alkyne, which is a carbonyl, being a nucleophile, it can form a bond with uh, nucleophilic, the, uh, what do you call it, electrophilic carbon with a leaving group. And it goes through the SN2 reaction. And final product is the carbon, uh, terminal alkyne carbon form a bond with the R oftentimes is also carbon. And then basically, we are increasing the number of carbon in the parent through this reaction. This will be the added. Okay, this, is the, this is the original carbon long chain. Now I added more carbon in the R, the LQ group. So this is the following example. We have a terminal, uh, one, two, three, four, five. It's a pentine. This pentime is terminal, so we can use the strong base, remove the proton, give us uh, pententide, it's anion carbonyl. The reaction intermediate is this. And this attack, the acyl carbon, and bromide is a very good leaving group. After that, the terminal carbon, the alkyne carbon, form bond with the acyl group. 
this acid group it come from the acyl iodide. So you can see by this two-step reaction, we're adding more carbon into the uh, organic backbone. So instead of pentine, now we have a heptine. We increase number of carbon in the structure. In organic synthesis, this is a very important tool to elongate, we call it elongate, making the uh, making more longer uh, currents. Okay, this reaction does not work with the secondary or tertiary alkyl halides because we learned in the elimination reaction, secondary, especially tertiary alkyl halides, uh, they are exclusively for elimination reaction because of huge steric uh, hindrance. Those alkyl groups block the entrance of the uh, nuclear the nucleophile, make the nucleophile hard to access. Instead, the beta hydrogen, if available, can be um, taken away by those uh, nucleophile base and go through elimination reaction. So that's the alkylation reaction. It is SN2 reaction. The terminal alkyne from the anion and act like a nucleophile to attack the halides, give you longer uh, carbon. And so it can be do the double. So this is the uh, example. Uh, start from the, this is at the double terminal, both carbon and terminal alkyne. alkyne. So we can make it one of the uh, carbon add one alkyl group, so this is the first step. First step, we use base, and we use, this is the uh, substrate. This become nucleophile and attack, attack the acyl group. So basically we are losing this hydrogen. First step, we're losing this hydrogen and replaced by the acyl group. And then this is be, still is a terminal alkyne. And then we can go through another cycle, another reaction. Another reason take away this second proton and uh, use this uh, as a nucleophile. Attacks is a methyl group. This is a methyl iodide. So another second SN2 reaction. We add a methyl group on this carbon. So it's kind of interesting to see the uh, acetylene uh, being the smallest alkyne. We can add a functional group from both ends through the two separate step reactions. So that's the uh, acetylene reactions. Uh, this is towards the end. We have to go back to the acetic alkyne ozonolysis. So basically, we have triple bond. It'll give us the um, carboxylic acid as a final product. Okay, different from the alkene. So in, 